Hello. In this video, I'm going to walk through the setup of a development environment uh, for Hadoop on Windows using the Syncfusion Big Data Platform. So I'm on the uh, Syncfusion Big Data Platform homepage on our webpage uh, website. Uh, you just go to products and then uh, pick the Big Data Platform there. And you can click on the download button. In my case, I'm already logged in uh, using my account. Uh, you can create a free account and log in. Um, if not, it'll prompt you to create an account. And uh, once you're logged in, it simply uh, takes you to the confirmation page. Now, it will prompt you with uh, two different um, options. Um, if you're a developer interested in a local install, you get an option, you get an EXE. And if you're interested in running a production cluster, you get another option. Um, the first thing is you click on the uh, Big Data Studio download uh, that's uh, provided as part of the development experience on the Big Data Platform, Syncfusion Big Data Platform. You, you do that first. Uh, it's a fairly large download. It's about 1.2 gigabytes um, at, at this time. So it takes a little while to download. Um, I also recommend downloading the cluster uh, EXE, Big Data Cluster EXE. Um, that is typically associated with the creation of a production cluster. Uh, it also has a monitoring component uh, that is useful when you're working with um, Hadoop on your uh, local system. So I would recommend downloading that at all, also at the same time. Uh, you don't have to download it. You don't have to have it installed uh, in order to work with Hadoop on your uh, local system. Um, but it's something that would be nice to have. You don't need the rest of the stuff. You don't need the big data agents uh, or anything else um, uh, to download and install a local version of Hadoop uh, on your uh, system. So once the download is done, um, it, there is uh, nothing special to do to install it. You just run the installer. It's a standard Windows installer. You can essentially accept defaults and then everything will be configured for you basically. At the end of the installation process, you will have uh, a dashboard that starts up. Uh, so this is kind of how it looks. So you have uh, two sections uh, at the top. You have a Big Data Studio environment and then you have a cluster manager environment. In this uh, video, I'm not gonna focus on the cluster manager. We'll cover that uh, for monitoring in a different video, but just to get started, uh, I'm just gonna focus on the Big Data Studio environment, which is really what helps you get started with um, working with HDFS and running jobs and, and so forth. The first thing you have to do when, once you uh, install it and have this running is to click on the service manager. So in my case, I already started the services uh, to start, save some time. And uh, the reason we have a local service manager, even though uh, when we install it, uh, we configure it as a Windows service and have all that plumbing already installed. Uh, we don't start the services. And the reason is memory because this is not a production uh, cluster and uh, we don't expect you to um, keep Hadoop services running on your uh, laptop or on your desktop all the time uh, because it would simply take memory um, that you would maybe need for other purposes. Uh, for the same reason, we don't start HBase um, uh, unless you need to uh, run HBase. If you need to run HBase, you can go ahead and click HBase services and start that. Um, Uzi is also uh, the same way, it's an optional service. Um, if you're familiar with Uzi, it's a workflow uh, system as part of the Hadoop ecosystem and you can start that work with it uh, the same way. If you don't need it, if you just want core Hadoop services to work with uh, jobs, um, then you, you don't need to start these optional services. Another note is that the first time you run the service manager, uh, it may take uh, more than a few seconds, it may take a couple of minutes to initialize. Um, there is a lot of initialization that goes on. Uh, it creates uh, sample files and so forth, so um, it, it may take a little longer than usual. So now that this is actually running, uh, we can go ahead and launch the studio environment now. So this will uh, take a few seconds to start up uh, the, um, the Syncfusion Big Data Studio environment. So the Big Data Studio, uh, as it comes up, is uh, a single um, environment which allows you to work with both uh, local clusters and remote clusters. Um, you can connect to it and, and work from it um, all within the um, environment provided uh, by the Big Data Studio. So we have uh, different tabs uh, that cover different aspects of uh, the Hadoop ecosystem. The commonly used aspects are all accounted for here. So the first tab uh, has a Windows Explorer, Explorer like UI so I can actually go in and uh, for example I uh, ran a word count job um, I can look at the results uh, that were produced by that job. Um, I can create folders, um, I can delete folders, I can manage them uh, just by navigating uh, through the hierarchy. Uh, it also ships with a lot of uh, sample data basically, so sample data that uh, are used in samples that we ship and uh, data that you can use for your own samples basically. Uh, there's also uh, fully uh, 
active interactive Hadoop uh, shell that's provided as part of this environment. So uh, you can run um, Hadoop uh, commands. Uh, so for example, if you uh, select this, uh, I can just select that and say I want to run that um, on my uh, Hadoop installation and it would go ahead and actually submit that job. Um, the environment that we have within Studio um, is um, already pre-configured. It's set up to um, have everything running and um, it's, uh, it's something that you don't have to do anything. It just works out of the box, basically. Um, I'm going to skip Scoop, uh, but it's an environment to um, bring in data from relational databases, export to relational databases, useful during um, both production and development. And during the development process, this user interface makes it easy to move data back uh, and forth. Uh, we have a full-fledged uh, interactive environment for Pig and Hive. Um, both are high-level environments for authoring MapReduce jobs. And you will see that we ship a fair number of samples with each of these environments. And I can go in and actually run any of these samples. Um, I can also interactively kind of enter um, uh, these commands in the console. So for example, I can actually just say, uh, run this in console, and it would just run that alone, uh, th that segment alone in the console, and then um, have uh, um, have it ready for further interaction, basically. Same way with Hive, uh, we also have a fully uh, functional Spark uh, uh, environment uh, installed. Now, one um, aspect to note uh, with Spark um, is that by default, unless you actually navigate to the Spark folder, Spark is not initialized. Um, again, it's a memory thing. Uh, if you uh, Spark will take up uh, some memory on your machine. So if you don't need to have it running, then um, you don't need to navigate there, basically. If I navigate to HBase, it will tell me that HBase services are stopped. Uh, and if I need it, I can start it and, and start working with it. So that's kind of a quick run through with the studio. Um, just one other thing before I um, end this. Um, I have uh, also um, um, links to um, start a Hadoop ecosystem configured both uh, standard uh, batch files, uh, command prompt, uh, and also PowerShell, basically. So I can do that, and then I get a fully initialized environment uh, with all the right environment variables, all the right paths uh, configured. So I can just go in and actually type Hadoop, for instance, and uh, it would uh, know uh, where Hadoop is installed and, and, and so forth, basically. So if you want to work um, on, on the command line, uh, without using the studio, you can do that too, basically. And uh, just one more thing is the same environment uh, can be used uh, to configure remote clusters as well. So in this case, uh, I can go back to here and look at the clusters. I'm also uh, able to see another remote cluster that I can switch to and connect to it. And it works the exact same way as working with the local cluster. So hopefully that gives you a quick uh, start with, with development on, on uh, the Syncfusion Big Data Platform. So we'll cover other aspects in future videos. Thank you for watching. And as usual, if you have any uh, support or any feedback, uh, please contact us through our direct track support system available on our website. Thank you.